In this video, I will discuss mermaid syndrome. First, I will give three case scenarios. Case number one, a term unit with ambiguous genitalia and single lower limb was born to a 21-year-old mother with a history of gestational diabetes mellitus. Nunate was the first child of the family and parents did not have a familiar relationship. Mother did not have any health care and medical treatment at the time of pregnancy. Nunate birth weight was 3.4 kg. Case number 2. A 40-year-old woman delivered a full-term baby of 2.7 kg by a caesarean section at a tertiary care hospital. Upper torso of the baby was normal but the lower limbs were fused. External genitalia were absent. Indications for caesarean section were elderly woman and a precious baby. A routine 12-week antenatal scan had shown oligohydramnias. Case number 3. A life born was normally delivered at term by a 30-year-old fourth gravida mother of lower socioeconomic status with history of tobacco use. Examination of the baby revealed caudal dysgenesis having fusion of lower limbs and a single leg with one foot and seven toes. There was no identifiable external genitalia and anus. Incidentally, the infant died few hours after birth. Now the discussion. Sirenomelia or mermaid syndrome was first reported in 1542 by Rocius et al. It is a rare congenital anomaly which is characterized by partial or complete fusion of the lower limbs and it is usually associated with other severe anomalies. Sirenomelia affect males more often than the females by a ratio of 2.7 to 1. Incidence is approximately 1 in 60,000 to 1 lakh births. Sirenomelia occurs with greater frequency in one twin of monozygotic twins than it does in dizygotic twins. Sirenomelia or mermaid syndrome has been classified into seven classes by the presence or absence of bones within the lower limbs. It has been classified as an expanded part of the vectoral association and as a form of caudal regression syndrome, but these are different entities and mermaid syndrome is a separate syndrome. Now the clinical presentation of mermaid syndrome or the sirenomelia. Characteristic finding of this syndrome is partial or complete fusion of the lower legs. Degree of severity is highly variable. Affected infants may have only one femur or may have two femurs within one shaft of the skin. These infants may have one foot, no feet or both feet, which may be rotated externally. Cochyx, that is the tailbone, is usually absent and the sacrum is partially or completely absent as well. Now the associated anomalies. Most important is the bilateral renal agenesis, complete or partial agenesis of the genitourinary system, imperforate anus, and absence or ambiguous external genitalia. Single umbilical artery is also common in mermaid syndrome and it is one of the diagnostic clues. There may be cleft palate and pulmonary hypoplasia. Other common associated anomalies include neural tube defects, anencephaly and spina bifida including meningomyelocele. There may be holoprosencephaly. Other associated congenital anomalies include hypoplastic left heart syndrome or other heart defects, esophageal atresia, omphalocele, intestinal malrotation, and other limb defects, most commonly absence of radius. In case of monoamniotic twins, where one is affected, the normal twin produces the amniotic fluid, and the twin with sirenomelia has Potter sequence, that is pulmonary hypoplasia and abnormal faces. Now the cause of mermaid syndrome. Both environmental and genetic factors may play a role in the development of this disorder. Nunates born with mermaid syndrome often have normal karyotype. Now mothers younger than 20 years and older than 40 years are more vulnerable. Maternal exposure to teratogenic factors such as air pollution, cocaine, tobacco, alcohol, cigarettes and radionuclide during gestation are the risk factors. 
Maternal diabetes mellitus has also been associated with sirenomelia. Now the pathogenesis, however, it is the subject of debate. Two hypotheses have been suggested for its pathogenesis. First is the vitalin artery steel hypothesis. This theory suggests that there is shunting of blood via an abnormal abdominal artery arising from high up in the aorta towards the placenta. This leaves the caudal part of the embryo poorly perfused. Hence, there may be complete or incomplete agenesis of the caudal structures. Now, second is the defective blastogenesis hypothesis. According to this, an impaired blastogenesis in which lower body organs have inappropriate angiogenesis may lead to insufficient growth and incomplete development of the caudal region. Now the antenatal diagnosis. Sirenomelia can be diagnosed as early as 14 weeks gestation on the prenatal ultrasound with following symptoms. Nucal translucency, fused lower limbs, single lower limb, renal agenesis, single umbilical artery and oligohydramnias. When there is low amniotic fluid around the fetus, the diagnosis is more difficult. Now the prognosis of mermaid syndrome. Sirenomelia is usually fatal. Many pregnancies with a sirenomelic fetus spontaneously miscarry. One third to one half of the infants are still born, with all but a few dying in the neonatal period. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel.